So when we think about this multiple identity that we have, which I unfortunately erased, uh, when we think about this multiple identity we have, we're still not taking it to its more logical conclusion or a productive end for the way this, the subject of this book and possibly for many other ways of thinking about um, how we are and what we do in the world. We think of, I present, I control this identity. Here's Brian, again, home, store, church, just for some, if for example sake. So I'm thinking again, well here I am, Brian, I'm in complete control of this. I decide how I present myself in this, in this particular context. So Brian, the father at home, or Brian, the husband, is in, completely in control of how his identity is. It's me, just, I, I, am, I make my identity. But if we start to take the idea of identity tied to context to its logical conclusion, then we think, have to think about there are other people in these contexts with us that help us decide our identity. So identity is practices and beliefs tied to context. And practices and beliefs aren't generated by me. I participate in them. These are decided upon by the context, the people in the context, the members of that particular community, for instance. So now, people besides me are helping me negotiate or make my identity. If that makes sense. Okay, so now, I have to, now we want to think about well, what, what might that look like? What could we do to make that useful to us? What's one way to think about it? A productive way to think about um, this manufacture, this negotiation of identity is through discursive psychology. And discursive psychology, because you see the word discursive, it has to do with organized speech or organized expression. So what this says is that people, it's as if your life is a movie and you are the director and scriptwriter and actor, and you decide to present yourself in a certain way, and that's called first order positioning. I position myself as a professor, so I do professorial things, whatever that is. I wear a tweed jacket with elbow patches. I smoke a pipe. I don't know, maybe 50 years ago. I you know, read books, I write papers, I do research, I talk about things that most people find uninteresting or not worthwhile, but some people find very interesting and I have a captive audience of hundreds of people that'll listen to me and they'll do whatever I say at, the at, at, a, at a drop of a hat. I could say, take out a pen and paper and they take it out. So I'm doing this positioning as a professor. Okay. So, those people react to my positioning with second order positioning. They position me now. I come in here and let's pretend they don't accept my notion of what a professor is, my positioning myself as a professor. They have a different reaction to it. So I'm neither since my positioning, my identity, is in relation to other people all the time, I have to consider their positioning of me. So I'm not just this, and I'm not just what they think about me, I'm both things. That's my identity. So if we start to think about this, this is productive when we start to think about what people do or what people uh, believe about the internet and the places that they go on the internet. One concept of discursive psychology or positioning theory 
that's especially salient when we think about the web and what we do there is reflexive positioning. This is where I react to what the second order positioning. So let's go back to me as professor. And I'm in the lecture hall and I'm doing my professorial stuff. I'm positioning myself as a professor. And the students are trying to position me not as a professor, as uh, not an authority figure, as less of a friend, not even an acquaintance, just is not of value, that I'm just some guy. They don't under, they don't know who it is. And they, so they position me in a multiple of different ways, but not as a professor. I detect that, and so I want to position myself. I more strongly express my professorialness, <laughs> if there's such a word, um, to reflexively position myself as a professor to retain what I want to do. So there's this struggle between first order and second order positioning and what people want us to be and what we believe we're like. So there's this constant, sometimes it blows up into very big you know, conflicts and things, but usually it's pretty even, low level, but we're always doing this, we're always in mind of positioning ourselves in a certain way. And you'll notice that while the position is re related to social role, it's also very fluid because it's my interpretation of that role and how I play out the practices and beliefs of that role and in the context in which the role makes sense. Okay? Remember, I can't go to the grocery store and be professor. Although someone from the class, one of my students, one of my colleagues might recognize me and say, oh, Professor Morgan. So now, my real role is grocery shopper there, but I'm always tied to my other positions, my other identities, as long as people know what they are. People that don't know me will never position me as professor. They won't see my identity as professor. I'm just a guy. They might, after a period of time of observing me and the things I do, they might say, well, that guy's kind of a egghead. He must be sort of, what, probably a professor. And some people are better at that than others. 